Hello, and thanks for joining me on another episode of Leadership Bits, where every bit counts. I'm your host, Aviv Ben Yosef, tech executive consultant, and today I'd like to talk to you a bit about something I've been thinking about lately, and that's tech capital. Instead of thinking about technical debt, which we seem to do so much lately in our industry, I want to think about R&D organizations as an innovation center and not as a cost center, not something that keeps on taking on debt, but instead as an enabler for the business, something that has impact and can help us move the needle when it comes to the business. All right, let me start with some examples. I think the best example in the market right now would be Apple. Whenever Apple announces new hardware or even new software, you see that there's usually one bit at least of it that's something that you can tell has come from innovative R&D and not something that product came and asked for initially, at least not specifically the way it was done. The most recent example would be the new displays for the Mac Pros that has this nanotech laser etching glass thing that reduces glare. I'm sure that no one in product came over and said, we want that, because Apple had to invent it first. This is an example of how R&D came on and brought much more value to the organization. And that comes in Apple in terms of making every chip faster, making everything smaller, etc., etc. You have to make sure that you enable, as an R&D center, enable the business to do things they wouldn't even have thought to be possible. And that's something major in my thinking. Too often nowadays I see people talking about tech debt. We're getting more tech debt. We have to get rid of the tech debt. And what I don't understand here is why this has become normal. After all, if a person would keep talking to you about how they're taking on debt and reducing it and taking on debt and then reducing it, you, you would tell them that they're not doing something properly. When you're working on something innovative and adding value, hopefully you should be getting to the level that you stop taking on debt and you start actually getting capital. All right, and that's a thinking mindset change that I think more people in our industry need to consider. What does this even mean? First of all, imagine that when an R&D organization starts, a startup starts or whatever, at the beginning, R&D is a hatchling. We don't even know yet what we need to do, what are the requirements, how to match up to them, etc. There are many, many unknowns. This is the stage where you probably take on some debt because you don't know what you're going to even use in a couple months, six months, whatever. Usually this is very driven by product because they know what they want is some sort of a big vision and you want to get there. But what do you do later on? Hopefully as the organization grows, you no longer just are led by product demands that you fail to catch up to. Right? A health organization, at least, this is the break-even point for a, an R&D organization, is when you can deliver pretty much whatever product need. All right? You'll never deliver everything because they will always want more, very likely. Yet, what you need is to be able to set up a roadmap and deliver it in good enough quality repeatedly. That's the basics, right? And I'm talking about taking it one step further. Don't be at break-even. Think about how your organization can actually provide more value to the business as a whole. All right, when you don't do this, when you're in the break-even or even hatchling mindset, what you end up having is an organization that keeps on getting demands from product and making sure that it fits and then maybe saying, all right, we need another position here and allow me to recruit two more people for that and whatever. And that's what you do. That's how you decide on budgets. That's how you decide on a roadmap, etc. And I'm saying is that, of course, you need product to guide you. But once you get a good enough organization, you can think ahead and actually be part of this. 
for example, an organization that thinks forward won't be busy running around and trying to fit all the product demands that they have to the existing frameworks. But instead, you will have some sort of innovation and research done and maybe even development done in order to enable your business to achieve more. One such example is a client I had, actually two clients that did something very similar. And that's that at some point, people in the, organi in the, in the organization decided to optimize their pipeline, at least some parts of it, and then they resulted in such an amazing improvement in their speed and throughput, something that no one in product ever imagined, that they were now able to do so much more for their clients. And they, this actually opened the door to offering many more services that prior no one would have imagined. Another interesting example is an organization that enables features that no one would have thought of earlier because of cost. For example, if you find a way to reduce your storage costs or computation costs, all of a sudden you can find new business models or new features that no one uh, would have thought of originally. Or I know one company that essentially decided to change the implementation behind something that the users won't actually see but by using and leveraging some cloud technologies, they are now able to offer their services at a fraction of the cost, meaning they can all of a sudden actually have some sort of a freemium offering that wouldn't have been possible otherwise, etc. And this all comes from having some sort of autonomy in your teams and having people with the capability of thinking about impact when your organization is completely driven by product and has no slack time to think ahead because you've got your timelines and you've got your goals and you have to meet those deadlines and everyone are running at 100% capacity, nothing innovative is going to happen. You might stumble upon things every now and then, but there's no deliberate innovation. And that's too bad. I mean, after all, in tech, what we have... Our main building blocks here are the R&D centers. Those are who provide us with leverage and advantages. And those are the biggest assets you've got. And thinking of it just in terms of cost is a big, big waste. I mean, this is a big opportunity wasted. And I see it time and again, even if in your thinking, what you tell yourself is that you're not there. If your organization doesn't continually change because of disruptions coming from the R&D, you are dropping the ball here. And you should make sure that you've got some people in some capacity doing innovation, thinking ahead. You as the leader, be it a CTO or VP or whatever, need to know where are your opportunities and when to invest in some things that may provide you with more tech capital, which you can then deploy where you need to, all right? And this doesn't mean go into debt. You can use your capital and have fun with it. That's what we do once we've got enough money, right? Do the same with your organization. I hope you found this interesting. This is just my thoughts about this concept, which I'm still working on. I would really love your feedback. You can find my email on avivbenyasef.com. Just let me know what you're thinking. And lastly, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do in your podcast player of choice. Thank you again for joining. I really appreciate that. And talk to you soon.